Hey all, welcome back to Fire and Water Travel Services. I am Darren and today we're going to take a look at the Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas that I was on just last month. We'll be right back. Hey all, welcome to Fire and Water Travel Services. We specialize in affordable luxury and culinary adventures with all types of travel including cruises, all-inclusives, and any type of travel that you're looking for. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and make sure you like and subscribe and share this channel. All right, all the independence of the seas was Royal Caribbean's last freedom class ship built in 2008. It's had a couple of refurbs since then, added some stuff, changed some stuff around, but it's one of the last ships that has an indoor promenade. Um, the uh, newer Oasis class ships and Icon class ships have the outdoor neighborhoods. This is one of the last ones with an indoor promenade where some of your shops and restaurants and, and stuff like that are located, guest services of course, but as you can tell, um, you know, lots of lights and lots of space. They had the interior um, rooms with the windows looking into the promenade on this ship as well but um, also is where the pizza can be located and some other things like the vintage wine bar. Uh, like I said, most of the shops, but they also did the um, sail away party here when we sailed because it was raining out pretty good and they couldn't do the sail away party on the outside deck. So it was convenient for that. All right, all like I said, this ship was built in uh, 2008 and had some refurb since then, but this is the corridor going down to the cabins here, and you can see it's got some um, uh, artwork kind of embedded in the walls there. Uh, coming out to the elevator banks, it only has two sets of elevators, um, one towards the aft and one towards the front of the ship. There is none in the middle, so it makes uh, so you have to do so quite a bit of walking to get to the elevators or stairs um, when you're leaving your cabin. But like I said, this particular ship only holds about 3,700 guests, and um, so it's about a half as much as the newer uh, Oasis class and Icon class ships, of course. The uh, wind jammer is the buffet, of course, on all the Royal Caribbean ships. And unfortunately, it wasn't open at 6 until 6.30 that morning. But I'm going to walk you around the uh, 11th deck here. This is the Lido. Of course, has some other food options here with the fish and ships, where you can get some included fried fish and shrimp and all that uh, during the lunch and dinner hours. Of course, this is your water slide kids area uh, with the pool and all that. Um, actually had a pretty decent sized water slide and pool area um, for the kids and also a separate one for kind of mixed right here the, the actually had the movie screen over here so this is kind of more of the total family area and then of course uh, when you walk towards the back it walked into the adults only area which had a pretty decent size adults only area with its own pool and two different hot tubs that kind of hung over the side here which I kind of liked. Didn't happen to go into those, but the, those hot tubs are pretty cool, but it has a decent sized adults only area pool as well with its own bar and all that. So actually was kind of impressed with it. Even for an older ship, um, the adults area was, was pretty 
pretty good size and we actually hung out here a couple times uh, during the cruise and we're able to find um, loungers and all that and weren't really having to fight too much. The only thing is there was a pretty big smoking area in this uh, part of the ship and it kind of uh, can cloud you up sometimes. Um, this is the gym and spa and actually I was pretty impressed with the size of the gym area. It was actually pretty large for a ship of this size. Usually this is about the size of a gym you'll find on the 6,000 passenger ships. But of course it had the steam rooms and spa rooms were upstairs and all that. Um, got, finally got into the Windjammer buffet for breakfast and I was impressed with it. It was actually pretty decent um, selection for breakfasts um, with hot stuff and cold stuff, lots of fruit, hot cereals, cold cereals, eggs. They had a carving station even for breakfast but pre-made omelets and an omelet station. It was always pretty busy because it was really your only um, place for breakfast, except on one or two, I think the sea days, they had breakfast in the regular uh, main uh, dining area. But um, one of the things they did, they only opened it up uh, at the beginning, they only opened up half of the uh, area. Both of your specialty dinings, the Giovanni's Italian and the Steakhouse it was actually right when you walked in the Windjammer as well. So they're all in the same spot. The only restaurant that wasn't in this area was the Japanese uh, restaurant and sushi bar. So walking out here, you had the uh, different uh, areas as well. You had a little uh, Spanish type bar and rest and then, uh, then you walked into the Playmakers, which is your sports bar That has some additional food items here that are extra and then it walks you right into the casino Casino was decent, but it was a smoking casino So you can it reeked of smoke even though they have the smoke eaters in there um, Even in first thing in the morning you walked in there. You could smell the smoke so that's what you're going to have on these older ships as well. And this was the schooner bar, um, which is you walk right past this when you actually come on board the ship. And right after that, you had the star lounge, which is where they have a lot of your um, karaoke, uh, all kinds of um, trivia, sometimes bingo. It's your multi-purpose lounge area. And right outside that, you have the library that um, it's actually a nice little quiet area. It does have a lot of books and some games, but it's a good place to uh, get away from it all and uh, maybe do some work on your laptop and all that. So walking outside to the back of the ship here on the top deck, this is the sports area with your sports deck, of course, and your rock climbing wall right next to that. And you got that um, bouncy area up top and they have some different things going on with that. It's like a trampoline type. Uh, area where they strap you in and you bounce around of course you got your water slides and all that are back on this area and the flow rider which uh, Royal Caribbean's famous for I, I sat there and watched this little girl get thrown back and forth a couple times on the flow rider <laughs> if you can see that but uh, of course uh, this is a, on the, the back of the ship on the top deck a couple different great water slides and all that um, the other side you have um, where the kids areas kind of pop out here so your kids clubs kind of back up into that and then you got your johnny rockets hamburger restaurant which is a up charge so when we were in port for the at uh, coco k that day we were right next to the newest oasis class ship that royal caribbean has which is the utopia of the seas and um, it just was massive. One of the things I did like about the adults area and some of the other um, areas by the pools is they had these little things on the uh, loungers that said you're not allowed to save them and walk away. So they would put these on there so people knew that if they left their stuff there for a long time, they would get rid of them. So that's why we were able to get uh, space on the ship. So overall, we kind of liked the ship. Um, the layout was okay for a older, smaller ship, but we really loved the entertainment. One of the things, guys, we really loved on this ship was the entertainment. It did have the ice skating rink, of course, on level 
three or two. I can't remember really which one it was, but it was um, towards the center of the ship. But they had a couple different ice skating shows, and we really enjoyed them a lot. Um, so they were very professional, professionally done and um, very entertaining. I uh, really liked the skill of the skaters. It was phenomenal. And they also opened it up where you could actually go and, and skate uh, on the rink yourself during the, the days as well. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs, and I didn't do it, of course, but it was great for the kids and the family to go down there and do some ice skating if you so desired. And again, guys, like I said, these shows were very entertaining. My wife and I both loved these. But what we really wanted to see on this ship happened to be the Broadway musical Grease, which um, was really good. Unfortunately, the first night when it was supposed to show, they had technical issues. So the six o'clock show wasn't able to be shown. So we had to come back for the nine o'clock. And then they only had it, they had a special show one other night, I think the night that we were, our last night on the ship. But my wife was able to watch it twice. I got to see it this first time, and it was really good, as you're going to see some excerpts right here. guys this was the main dining room and they only had one main dining room but they had three different levels and they also had a little spot um, that the chef's table was was right located right above where I'm filming here if you could see that little part that jutted out on the floor above me but very big uh, main dining area uh, very actually nice looking with a big chandelier there in the middle um, of course, they had the entertainment as well during the meals. So I did a sep I'm doing a separate video on all the food items that we had on the Independence of the Sea. So make sure you check that out. And this is oh, the day we were in um, Coco Cay. Like I said, we were next to the Utopia of the Seas. And you can tell just how big the Oasis class ship here is next to the Freedom class ship. So many m more people and so much more to do on the Oasis class. So thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Check out fireandwatertravel.com and contact us for all your travel needs. And look out for more videos on the Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas on the food and other stuff. I'll be seeing you on the next video.